this is how every single thing works. We get better and we grow as we move outward to go do things, to go, if you're single, to date, if you're married, to go be a better married person or increase the satisfaction in a marriage. If you are going to attack a sales call, go meet with a customer, go have a difficult conversation with somebody, go establish a goal, go you know, win a gold medal, go win a football game, whatever it is, whatever it is, we don't just sit in a chair and say, oh, I'm going to go conquer the world. I'm going to go get started. I'm going to go lose 50 pounds or I'm going to go, you know, get out of debt or I'm going to go make a million dollars. A lot of people do. That's what they do. And it doesn't work so much of the time when you sit in your chair and you come up with a goal and you get committed. I'm committed this time. And they go do it. No, that's not what happens. Here's what happens. First, they get their tribe together. They get their tribe together. The team that's going to be holding them up, supporting them, breathing all sorts of things into them. And from that tribe in life, you move outward. I'll give you a couple of examples of this. I remember years ago, years ago, um, I was working with a man in a particular industry who was the uh, CEO of a, a manufacturing company. And they made products or sold everywhere. Did really, really well, really, really well, leading that company as the CEO. Well, he did so well that it occurred to him, as it does many times for many people, maybe even some of you, that what you're doing so well for a big company, you could go do on your own. In other words, he could start his own manufacturing company totally capable of running one. No talent, no lack of the industry knowledge, no anything. No lackings there in running a company. So he's talking about his, you know, different aspects of this and all this. And, and he asked me, uh, you know, if I had any thoughts for him. And one of the thoughts I had was I had another friend who had actually done exactly the same thing um, in that particular manufacturing and distribution industry. And I said, you know what? He, he is a really good guy. You guys won't exactly be competitors, but you're in the space saying, so I think he would really be glad to talk to you. Gave him a call, set the two of them up. I said, go get his advice. He's done this very successfully. That guy had built a company at that point was close to a billion dollars. Done really well. He goes and talks to the wise older guy. Comes back. I said, so how'd it go? He said, it was a joke. It wasn't helpful at all. Why'd you send me to that guy? And I could not imagine, I mean, I know this, I know this other man, he's like so helpful to everybody, so brilliant, does so many good things. I could not, I mean, it just didn't fit what he was saying. I said, what do you mean? What, what do you mean? I can't imagine it not being helpful at all. What happened? And he said, so I went to him, I wanted to talk about, you know, finding the investors, the regulators you know, how you deal with, you know, the lobbying situation, the governments and how you structure, you know, the financing and which markets he went to to structure the, the bonds, all of this kind of stuff. He said, and I started asking every time I would ask him, so what'd you do about the marketing? But did you, he said, hold on. I don't want to talk about that yet. I want to talk about one thing. Who's your support group? And we go, what? I want to talk about finance. Who's your support group? You should not go into this venture 
without first putting your team together of support that's going to speak wisdom to you, give you feedback, give you courage, correct you, have some input that has some knowledge. He said, when you get that group together, then come back and talk to me, but I'm not going to talk to you until you do that. The guy was mad because he wanted to go. He wanted, he was ready to go. Now I knew this other man well. He had had the same group, he was older then. He had had the same group that had met together weekly for, at that time, about 25 years. <laughs> the other guy um, went out, raised all the money, started everything, had a factory, the whole bit, everything. Went out of business. Not too terribly long after that. Now, first of all, there's a lot of difference between being a CEO in an existing structure and doing that well and starting ex nihilo from nothing and building that structure. Those are very different things, which I knew he was going to need some help doing, but no, was ready to go. Didn't know he was going to have to be held up in the process. The Navy SEALs never send anybody out without their buddy. First thing you learn, learn in scuba diving, most important thing going on besides breathe is your buddy. Always. So this applies to every, let me give you another example. You know, we get a lot of dating calls on this program. And so many times, so many times, somebody's out there in the dating world and the they're in a difficult relationship or it's not going well with them, but they're at this juncture and they've either got to they've either got to set some good boundaries and good limits to get the person to grow up and get, have a wake-up call or they got to say goodbye right but it's very hard to do that sometimes because hey sometimes they don't have the skills and sometimes because the fear of losing the relationship is so great that the abandonment fear looms large and they cannot you know they're just afraid to break up sometimes people you who are dating you really would do well to break up and you know it but sometimes people can't do that because then they're alone but what if you knew your tribe sent you out there to have the conversation to break up and then you came back and your tribe is still there you're not alone are you you're not alone. This is this is true just all over life. All over life. I remember when um, when uh, one of our girls um, was uh, uh, going through sort of like a mean girl phase with some, some, there were a few girls at school, kind of a few bullies, and we're giving a hard time. And it, you know, that tough, if you've ever had, you know, middle school girls, you know that this is a thing that happens. And, you know, she came home and it's just talking about it. And I, you know what, we got our family together, Tori and her other sister, or her sister, all four of us. And we talked about it and then we assigned roles and we did a role play and we practiced. And, she practiced different ways of dealing with the bullies and what she was going to say and talking to her friends and all that. And she just got equipped and went back out there and dealt with it successfully. And I was thinking back, Oh, wow. I wish I had had that, you know, a tribe to go. This is why your kids support groups and the peer groups, you get them in, you know, church groups, good youth leaders, all of that. So important. If they have a tribe, it's so cool. It really, really is the way to go through life. So I say all this to remind you, you may be out there selling stuff or trying to perform or trying to get healthy or try. Oh my gosh, I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at, I've got to have one more surgery coming up. And I was looking at this video um, of two surgeons it said, tell me this particular difficult surgery. 
So the five biggest mistakes that people make when they have, you know, I'm having another total knee replacement on the other side, five biggest mistakes they make. And I'm thinking about what kind of PT you do, what kind of drugs you take, all this. Surgeons, number one, number one, they don't prepare adequately with the plan and have their team together. Number one, before you even get ready, who's going to help you through it? Who's going to be there? Who's going to help you get to the bathroom? Who's going to make sure you, you know, all this kind of stuff. All this kind of stuff, get your team together, your tribe. So whatever you're facing, whether it's the upside of starting a new business, whether it's on the downside of life, kind of to get upside of overcoming physical illness or, you know, an emotional or addiction or something like that. We work outward from the tribe, outward from the tribe, because just like think of the caveman, caveman, you, you know, you're in there and you got your tribe and then you go out there and you fight the monsters and all the buffaloes or whatever they used to kill and drag back to the cave where everybody's warm and toasty and loves each other and you got your team together. Come on. It's like a huddle, like going to the locker room in the halftime and you know, you're down 23 points and you do get all these idiots around with you that think we can still win this thing. And you do, and you do it because of the help that you get from the tribe. So go get your tribe together. Okay. You're suffering with an addiction. Go to a meeting, go to a meeting. I know I try to meet. I don't care. Go to a different one. Go join a group, go to celebrate recovery, go to AA, go to NA, go to SA, go Get a tribe, get a tribe, get a tribe, even if life is going well, because that will support it to continue to go well. You know, Tori and I have been in the same couples group for, we're trying to count it up. I, 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 I'm going to say it's about 17 years now, same group, same group of couples. It has just been so important I hate to be doing marriage kids and all that alone without a tribe tough so go do that